Hey everybody, Jill here. Today we're going to talk about keyword cannibalization analysis. Thank you for those that reached out to me about this. I had three people ask me to do a video about this, so I'm pretty excited that there's an interest in learning more about this. It's really a good thing to understand. So keyword cannibalization is when you have multiple pages ranking for a keyword. It is not always a problem, and today we're going to talk about when it is a problem and when it's not. When I do my keyword cannibalization analysis. I am now doing it in Google Sheets. I did used to do it in Google Data Studio, but I did find it to be cumbersome as it can take a long time for some of the data to load. I do provide both options for you in the article on my website about keyword cannibalization. So there's tutorial for how to do it with Google Sheets, and there is a template that you can download for Google Data Studio. I, if I have time, I'll kind of go through that real quick today too, just so you can see how it looks. Uh, but for sites that are bigger, I do recommend you just go to Google Sheets. It does make it a little bit easier. It's much faster. So to get started, you're going to have to install Search Analytics for Sheets. It's an add-on. It is only for Chrome. It is what allows you to pull in the data from Google Search Console into Google Sheets. So you would click the Install button here. It would go through the process, and it would then go ahead and place it under Extensions in your Google Sheet. Okay. You click open sidebar, and then you have a sidebar on the side. If this is your first time using it, what it's going to do is ask you to confirm that you do want to authorize Google Search Console to be able to pull the data in here. So there is an authorization process. Once that's done, all of your verified sites will show up in this dropdown, so you can choose different sites to work on. I already ran my report because I just wanted it ready for you guys. Let's just go through this real quick though. My date range, I usually only choose 30 or 60 days depending on the site. I never go over that because I really wanna work with the most accurate data possible. I don't wanna be looking at stuff from six months ago. So choose your date range, search type default web, group by. If you're following along with this tutorial, please choose query first and then page. It does put the query column first and the page column second. So you just wanna have it in those order just to make it simple to follow along here. You can ignore this for now. Aggregation type is default. Rows returned, you can just put everything. And then results sheet, you can choose where you want the data to be put. If you want it on the active sheet, new sheet, a specific sheet within your workbook here. Include fresh data, I never check that because the data is not always accurate. It does take Google Search Console a few days to update it and make it accurate. Once you have these selected, you'll click Request Data, and then you get this spreadsheet. Okay. The first thing I always do, just out of habit, I always freeze my first row. Okay. It just makes it easier to manage the data. And now you're looking at this report that probably has many thousands of pages, and you're going, what the hell? How is this easy? This is not easy. No, it's not. But there are ways to make it easy, and I'm going to show you that next. So go ahead and click on column A, which is your query column. And then you're going to do format, conditional formatting. Okay, And you can see it shows apply to range. So what this is telling me that anything from A1 through A13,074, which is how many rows exist, means that's how many queries I currently have, is going to have this formatting applied. Okay, But the thing here, you want to make sure that your A1 is actually a row of data. Okay, We don't want this to apply to a row that's not a data row. So my data row actually starts at 2. And the reason I know this is because I did do it with one and the results weren't right. So make sure you're using the right rows. Okay, Format cells, we're going to do custom formula is. Okay, I do have the custom formula in my article. So you could just copy and paste that easily into the cell. What this means is count if. If a row from A2 through A13,074 is greater than one, then go ahead and highlight it. So it means if I have a keyword that has more than one instance in these rows, turn it green. Easy. Okay, so when you're looking at these, you want to make sure that this matches what's up here. A2, you've got A2, and then A13074, and then A2 is the first. Okay, so you just make sure that these match. Do not remove the dollar signs, though. Those are important that they stay there. 
Okay. You can change the formatting to whatever you want. If you want to make it bold, you know, watch what happens. If I click bold, it'll make it bold. You can change the color. Maybe I want to do yellow and done. So this was step one. So now what we have is this amazing list that is now highlighting all queries that show more than one time. So now I have a basis for my analysis. So now you're looking at this and going, holy shit, that's a lot of rows. And I don't want to be scrolling all day with 20,000 rows, rows to scroll through. So we're going to fix that too. What we're going to do, this is still highlighted. We're going to click funnel for filter. Okay. Now we've got this little filter here. Okay. And I do filter by color. And what this does it will show me only the queries that are highlighted in yellow. I just made my life that much easier. This whole sheet is just highlighted in yellow. Okay, all the white ones go away. I don't care about those because those are ones that are not a problem. Okay, easy. So now we start our analysis. You can do this many different ways. I just kind of run through and you know, you'll know you know your site. You'll be able to eyeball whether or not there's problems or not. So let's just pick one at random. Garbage collector requirements. I can see there's four of these. Okay. But you can see the URLs are all the right URLs. Okay, What's making them different is that there is H2 anchor text for description, pros and cons, salary. So these may be showing up in the search results for this term, but that's okay. It's all the same. It's, it's all the same page. So it's all good. There is no cannibalization issue here. Okay, and that's pretty much going to be all of these. So garbage collector, how to become, how to become a garbage collector. So these are all exactly the same. So I don't need to worry about any of these. So I can hide all these. If I go through and I see stuff I can hide, I'm just hiding it. Okay. So let's go down a little more, find some that are actually an issue. Let's see. So the, you know, no, I don't want to do those. Let's go up further. I'm just trying to find ones that might be an issue. So this is a good example here. Okay. Two week horse, horse shoeing school. That's a tough one to say horse shoeing school. So I have two different posts ranking about that. Okay. I have one that's specifically about farrier schools and one that's about becoming a farrier Two very different search intents, but yet I am ranking both pages for that term. So I'm going to look at impressions. Okay. The farrier school does get more impressions, but looks like this one is actually a higher position. Okay. You can see this one's 16.8. Neither of them have high click-through rates. Okay. I would not expect this one to have a high click-through rate because this does not match the search intent. Okay. So this one, if it is ranking well, is not the one I want ranking. The click-through rate is going to be zero if it's at three because it's not answering their user search. If they're searching for a two-week horseshoeing school, they're looking for farrier schools. So I need to make sure that this page is ranking. So what I'd want to do here is look at both of these posts see if this one is in fact outranking this one for this term and then figure out a way to fix it whether i can do an internal link um, maybe de-optimize if i have this term on this page maybe i can remove it reword it make it something different make sure this page links to this one there's so many different things you can do so this is definitely going to be an issue and definitely one i want to check out okay so i'm going to leave that one there Okay. Same thing here. Um, farriers, actually, nope, this is not the same thing. 24 week farrier course. This is all the same page ranking. I do not need to worry about that one. Okay. And this is the process I go through. So you can see, you know, I do have a lot of pages. I, I there's probably a way to filter them out. I haven't done that yet. Um, but we could probably filter out the hashtag pages to make life a little easier. That way, um, you can minimize the amount of rows that you actually have to go through. So what I want to do, I'm going to actually show you, I did have a huge issue with cannibalization. And in all my years of doing this, I didn't really ever have that before. So it was a new experience for me. But what I had was, this is a good example of it, is basic industry is a good career path. So I wrote this post. It shot up really well. It, did, it went up quickly. Um, but then I noticed a few weeks later it plummeted and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, what the heck? So I do track my key, my main keywords in a keyword tool. And that's how I found out it was moving all over the place. So when I did this analysis, I was like, oh, wow. So you can see I had a lot of different pages ranking for this. I had is basic industries a good career path, which is the page that should be ranking. I had my blog was outranking it at one point. 
I had telecommunications post outranking it at one point. I had capital goods, consumer. So all of these pages at some point in time were outranking my main page. So to say I was frustrated was like really like putting it nicely because I had never seen it before and I couldn't understand. It took me a while to figure it out. So some of the things I tried, I had example on this post is consumer non durables a good career path. I had an internal link that went from this page to basic industries with exact match anchor text. So from is consumer non durables, there was a related post is basic industries a good career path with a link to the post. I removed that thinking that might be the issue. When I did remove that from this page, this bounced up a little bit, but then I still had other pages that it was bouncing between, but it stopped bouncing with this one. Okay. So sometimes internal links can be a big issue, especially on newer posts. Um, so now I actually wait on my internal linking. I, I don't really do internal links on new posts. I'll look for older posts to internal link from. So I'm a little more cautious about that now, but that was the issue for most of these, um, that there was just internal linking issues and the internal link was outranking the actual content. So that was one thing. One of the other things I did was I added most recent posts on my homepage, which I had never had before. That seemed to also help because now I have this authority page linking to my most recent posts. So that's a basic. I mean, most sites do have recent posts on the homepage. I didn't for this one, but I did change it. And now this page is ranking well again, um, just with those two things. I didn't re-optimize the pages or anything because I knew these were already well optimized. They were done with Surfer and a couple of other tools. So I knew it was well optimized and it, it just turned out to be something so silly. So it is ranking well now, but this is a really good example of what you don't want to see. And ironically, it happened on a whole bunch of posts. Okay, so this post, you could see it happens on a whole bunch of things. So at one point I had this on list of skilled trades. I had put in a little block about career paths and I linked to all my career path posts. What happened was this post list of skilled trades started ranking for is consumer non durables a good career path. I don't know why, but it did. Once I removed it, it stopped ranking for it. So that's what you need to do. You need to go through and really understand you know, what's going on. And this is also why I only look at like the last 30 or 60 days. If I had changed the date on this to 30 days, most of these probably would not be showing here because they were fixed a while ago. So these might drop off if I did a 30 day adjustment on this report. Okay. And that's what you do guys. You just go through and manually look at everything, uh, look for opportunities, uh, ways to fix cannibalization can be as simple as removing an internal link or adding an internal link. It could be that you do need to re-optimize. You may find an opportunity where you can merge posts. Maybe there's two posts that are both looking to rank, you know, in the top of page one and, you know, or bottom of page one, and you can merge them and have them become one post and then they'll skyrocket to the top of page one. Um, so go through, analyze, delete what you know we don't need to worry about and fix the ones that you do. So if you have any questions, let me know. 